In order to pay his water bill in 2001, David Lee Edwards, a convicted armed robber with a substance abuse issue, had to borrow money from a buddy. He purchased a pizza and two lottery tickets with the change. He had no idea that purchasing one of these lottery tickets would forever alter his life. He was suddenly transported from a life of incredible luxury, racehorses, and fast vehicles to one of bouncing in and out of prison. His experience was a genuine rags-to-riches tale in evidence that winning the Powerball may instantly lift individuals out of extreme poverty. Every year, Americans spend more than $70 billion on Powerball tickets in effort to match Edwards' good fortune. But what is sometimes forgotten is that 70% of those who win the lotto and become wealthy do so within the first few years, and Edward has accomplished this more magnificently than most. Early Years and Difficulties Edwards was born in 1955 and came from a low-income family in Ashland, Kentucky. Tragic events colored his formative years, the year he was born. His three-year-old sister passed away undergoing open-heart surgery, and his older brother drowned after jumping into Greenbow Lake's shallow water. Their newborn clothing were left hanging in Edwards' closet as his mother who was suffering from grief, attempted to deal with the losses. He used booze and drugs as a coping mechanism in his adolescence. He had his first encounter with the law when he was 16 after being caught carrying out a robbery. He engaged in a shootout with state police in a different incident, and to prevent injuries, tear gas had to be used. He would boast that Charles Manson had attended the reformatory school where he was sent, but it didn't stay, and he left before finishing. By the age of 18, he had graduated from marijuana to stronger substances, and his pattern of drug use and thievery had become more severe. Subsequently, at the age of 26, he attempted an armed robbery of a nearby petrol station for $360 and was given a 10-year prison sentence. A couple times he was granted parole, which allowed him to date, marry, and have a daughter named Tiffany. However, he repeatedly broke the terms of his parole after being let out and was soon back behind bars and divorced. He took 16 years in all to complete his 10-year sentence. Edwards began to change his life after being imprisoned. In an effort to better himself, he got sober and started taking college courses. After being released in 1997, he began working in the building trade. Sadly, his addiction persisted, and he had trouble holding down a job. He even experienced homelessness at one time and was forced to live in his car. It wasn't all horrible, though. At Fiesta Bravo, he met Shauna Maddox, a waitress, and the two fell in love. They later got engaged. Also passed down to him was his parents' previous $30,000 house. At least they had a roof over their heads, despite the fact that he was still broke. Then, in 2001, a remarkable event occurred that would alter everything. The Lotta Win Edwards, who had already spent a third of his life behind bars, was currently in a desperate financial situation and finding it difficult to make ends meet. Their water supply was cut off since things had become so terrible that they couldn't even pay their water bill. Edwards resorted to a friend for assistance after feeling ashamed and helpless. He decided to take Shauna out for pizza and a drink to forget their problems after borrowing some money to turn the water back on. They stopped at Clark's Pump and Shop on their way to the pub and on a whim decided to try their luck by purchasing $7 worth of Powerball tickets. Without a winner for 18 weeks, the jackpot grew to $280 million, the third highest amount ever recorded at the time. Edwards and Shauna were shocked to hear every single one of their numbers called out that evening. By evening, Edwards had joined four other victors in becoming a multimillionaire. Edwards and Shauna were shocked to hear every single one of their numbers called out that evening. By evening, Edwards had joined four other victors in becoming a multimillionaire. His portion of the proceeds, $41 million, was reduced by taxes to $27 million, a sizable sum that would nevertheless provide for him for the rest of his life. Currently, there are two options available to lottery winners. Take the lump sum or accept yearly payouts for a set period of time. As a result, Edward received an instant offer of $27 million, which works out to $2.9 million per year for 25 years. The safer option, given his past, would be yearly installments but every financial expert suggests taking the lump sum. This is due to the fact that investing the lump sum will almost always result in more money being made than from the yearly instruments. One of Edward's final sensible choices was to consult James Gibbs, a financial expert. He came up with an investment strategy that, if implemented, would bring home $85,000 in interest each month for the remainder of Edward's life. Additionally, 
he safeguarded a sizable amount of the income by allocating $16 million of the proceeds to the purchase of exceptionally secure bonds and annuities. Edwards appeared prepared to take his sizable ceremonial check because he had arrangements in place. He said, I didn't want to accept this money by saying I'm going to have houses and I'm going to purchase automobiles. I'm going to do this and that. Despite his past, he appeared grounded and intelligent. He further remarked, I'd like to take it in a humble way. For myself, my future wife, my daughter, and my future generations, I want this money to last. What could possibly go wrong with this mindset and such solid investments? Edward's luxurious way of life. Just after accepting his prize, Edwards decided to go the other way. He first negotiated a $200,000 bank loan so he and some buddies could travel to Las Vegas to celebrate since he couldn't wait for the money to arrive in his accounts. He spent the entire $200,000 in just five days before asking his new attorney to provide him more money via wire transfer. He relocated from a $30,000 rundown, unwatered Kentucky house to a 6,000-square-foot, $1.6 million estate in a gated community in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, complete with tennis courts and a golf course after receiving the genuine prizes a fleet of pricey cars, including a $200,000 Lamborghini Diablo and a $90,000 Dodge Viper, were then purchased for a further $1 million. In fact, the gated community's board of directors was challenged by his neighbors because he purchased so many cars. What did they object to? He had so many that their upscale neighborhood started to resemble a car lot as a result of his accumulation. Then he spent another $600,000 on a nearby Palm Springs property, a $80,000 gold watch, a $160,000 ring, a $30,000 plasma TV, three racehorses, and 200 replicas of medieval armor and swords. Next, for $1.9 million, he purchased a private Learjet and hired his own private pilot to ensure that he would never have to fly like a chump between his homes in California and Florida. With the best of intentions, he also made a few business bets without consulting Gib. They included a limo company, a $4.5 million fiber optics installation business, and three racehorses that he acquired at a discount as a result of 911, lessening overseas buying competition. In just three months, Edwards had spent $3 million. He had lost $12 million by the end of the first year, or about half of his wealth. To Fanny, he only kept the promise he made to his family. Tiffany, his daughter who was now 11 years old, had been living with her mother while Edwards alternated between prison and home, and he missed her. She was the person he called as soon as he realized he had won. He questioned, are you sitting down? Baby, daddy just won the lottery. To come and get you, I'm sending some people. The small girl panicked and ran hysterically through the home while screaming. The hotel room was brimming with gifts when she got there to see him, including a teardrop diamond ring. Tiffany would later clarify that there was a negative aspect to Edward's quick reunion with his daughter. The security risk was the reason my dad dispatched someone to retrieve me. Everybody in this area knew him and knew that I was his only child. He was afraid they would take me away for ransom. He promptly wired his ex-wife $500,000 in exchange for full custody of Tiffany and paid the $8,300 in back child support he owed. He hired nannies, maids, and a butler to take care of her and one of Shauna's kids and her room in his home was decorated with angels and had a pink princess canopy bed, computer, and flat-screen TV. She would take the private jet home to see her mother once a month or whenever she felt like it. He indulged her with visits on yachts and to Cinderella's castle in Disneyland for her 13th birthday, and he hired out the presidential suite of the Ashland Plaza Hotel for a sleepover party. Of course, not every purchase he made was wise. He blew $35,000 on a Hummer golf buggy that she was too young to operate and enrolled her in a private school that cost $16,000 a year, but that she detested. Addiction to drugs. However, Edward's extravagance extended beyond private jets, mansions, jewelry, and vehicles. The money just made it simpler to relapse into old habits while he and Shauna, who was now his wife, continued to battle addiction. Edwards withdrew from Tiffany's life once more, leaving her up to the nannies, and the two of them spent $200,000 every month on illicit drugs. Their preferred substances were prescription pills and heavy narcotics, and Edwards was very kind to Shauna, as well as his pals. Her abuse of OxyContin became so severe that Edwards spent $80,000 to send her to Passages Malibu, a posh recovery facility, for 60 days. The pals' luck ran out, 
Edwards covered each of their funeral costs after many of them overdosed and passed away. Sadly, Shauna's rehabilitation didn't work, and their relationship deteriorated. Later, Tefani would claim that she had stolen automobiles and Rolexes from Edwards, stating, Ash Wow recently began behaving erratically. All the medications were to blame. Others were telling my father that he ought to get rid of her, but he was unable to do so. Near the end, he admitted to me that his one regret was not getting rid of Shauna and taking care of himself. But the two of them were addicted to one another. After that, they became drug dependent. When Shauna used a crack pipe to stab Edwards in 2004 during a drug-fueled rage, the Palm Beach police were called to their mansion. The police were called once more the following year. And this time, they discovered sizable stashes of crack, cocaine, heroin, prescription narcotics, and used syringes in the couple's bedroom. Both Edwards and Shauna contracted hepatitis after using contaminated needles. Sadly, Shauna's rehabilitation didn't work and their relationship deteriorated. Later, Tiffany would claim that she had stolen automobiles and Rolexes from Edwards. Shauna recently began behaving erratically. All the medications were to blame. Others were telling my father that he ought to get rid of her, but he was unable to do so. The fall to absolute nothing. By 2006, the funds were gone, but Edwards was also in debt. Due to his lack of economic acumen and bad judgment, all of his resources, including the one he wanted to name Powerball, turned out to be losers. He was sued by both his creditors and former business partners as a result of his mounting debt. Gibbs, who served as his financial advisor, was perplexed and told reporters, if, if he had taken my advice on investments, he would have been making roughly $85,000 per month for the rest of his life. He instead sold the whole thing. He lost all of his purchases to sales, theft, or repossession. But he still owed the Bank of America $170,000 for the transactions made with his credit card and $50,000 in property taxes to the state of Florida. As the bank seized on their Florida home, Edwards and Shauna were forced to move into the rented warehouse where his fleet of vehicles had previously been kept. They placed Tiffany and her stepbrother in foster care. It was good at first, she remarked. I had a father. That's all I had hoped for. Ultimately, I was devastated because I knew I had lost my father. Edwards and Shauna finally split up amid claims of adultery and cruelty, and he descended into sorrow and drug addiction. He was discovered there, surrounded by rotten food, cracked pipes, and syringes, living in his own feces as the storage container quickly degraded. His next destination was treatment, and once he was sober, his ex-wife and her husband came to pick him up and take him back to Kentucky where he lived in a caravan park on food stamps and disability payments, a far cry from his former lavish lifestyle of mansions and fast automobiles. He missed Shauna, who had recently remarried, and his friends and relatives who were either gone or dead more than his fortune. Even though he stopped using narcotics, his liver was damaged, his health began to decline, and in 2012 he was given a liver disease diagnosis. Then, just 12 years after this historic victory, he died in a hospice by himself in 2013 and was cremated since there wasn't enough money to bury him. Nothing, not even a life insurance policy, was left behind for Tefani. She would later think, if he hadn't won, would he still be alive today? I believe he would, yes.